busy weekend. I want to just first get initial thoughts um, on Thursday's verdict uh, about for President Trump. What are, what's going through your head and, um, about everything that's kind of unfolded in the last few days? I mean, there's obviously lots of things going to, through your head. There was a concern about, uh, you know, the actual verdict that came out. There's concern about the, you know, the process that was used. Was it a legitimate process? All those things go through your mind. But the bottom line is, you know, you get back to work and you focus on the issues that we've been focusing on and you put the uh, the legal stuff aside. Is it concerning that the former president who's now running for re-election has been convicted of 34 felony counts? Well, you know, after talking to a lot of people over the weekend, it appears that uh, not a whole lot has changed. People are still very, very concerned about their pocketbook issues. They're concerned about, you know, the gas prices, grocery prices, insurance prices, uh, the cost of a mortgage and all those types of concerns about what's happening on the board. Uh, you know, yeah, they're aware of what happened, but it's kind of like, hey, Pete, those things aren't that important to us. What mat matters to us right now are pocketbook issues. People are not concerned that, you, you know, he may not even be able to vote. Uh, you know, convicted felons can't look at classified documents that doesn't find people don't seem to find that concerning. Uh, not in the experiences that I've had in the last three or four days. Uh, you know, they uh, they're very concerned about the process uh, again, but uh, they see the issues that are affecting them in their in their real lives every day. It's just harder to get through the day. Their paychecks are not going as far as they used to. Uh, and so that is what they are focused on. As the chair of the state party, you know, do you guys intend to stand behind the former president as he moves forward toward November? Well, absolutely. I mean, we look forward to uh, supporting the president through this process. Uh, you know, they're going to go through the court system. They'll go through the appeals process. We've seen this before. Uh, in 2016, we saw the Steele dossier uh, all the way up and through the election going into 2017. What did we find out a few months later? It was produced by the Hillary Clinton campaign as a campaign document. We saw it in 2020 when you had, you know, you had 51 Democrat intelligence professionals come out and say, Hunter Biden laptop. Uh, that really looks like Russian disinformation to us. And in reality, what was it? It was real. Uh, and now we're seeing, you know, potentially a more sophisticated attack uh, against Donald Trump, but it follows in the same line of what we saw in 16 and in 20. Um, what were the what what other kinds of things are you hearing from voters as you speak to them? You know, you, you mentioned the pocket book issue, pocket book issues. Um, what other things are they saying in in light of this verdict? Well, again, it's not necessarily in light of this verdict. I think in light of this verdict, what we're seeing is that the dialogue hasn't changed that much. Uh, you know, Republicans and independents and people who are uh, leaning towards voting for Donald Trump seem more convinced than ever that they should be voting for Donald Trump. Take a look at the fundraising numbers. I mean, it appears that he's raised, uh, the campaign has raised over $80 million in three, four days. Uh, that $80 million used to be a huge number for just a month. He's done it in three or four days. But again, that's one solid sign. We'll see what uh, you know happens in the polls, but we're still five and a half months away from election day. You know, five months uh, away from when people start voting, uh, and the you know our responsibility, my responsibility, uh, is to lead the party and to focus on the issue that I think people care about. Uh, if if you know, there's obviously more more cases down in Georgia that are that are going to go through court regarding the former president. Um, as we kind of see more of those develop, is there concern that that um, that maybe he won't be able to run, or is it see and and we would have to you know maybe put in another candidate, or is it pretty clear that you know from here to November Donald Trump will still be in the driver's seat? Donald Trump is going to be in the driver's seat. Uh, you know, there's lots of questions about the Georgia case. There's lots of questions about the Florida case. Uh, it's unlikely that either one of them will make it to court. Uh, before election day because of the problems in those cases. So Donald Trump will be the nominee. It will be Donald Trump uh, versus Joe Biden, unless the Democrats decide uh, that they want to change their candidate. But no, Donald Trump will be the nominee of the Republican Party. 
uh, I know sentencing is is about a month and a week or so away. Uh, there is a chance that you know jail time could be on the table. Um, what 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 are your thoughts about that as we we kind of get forward into this? Well, I mean that will be that would be an interesting development. Uh, but between now and then, and I think most likely after then, uh, we will continue focusing on on the real issues. I mean, we've seen a, a campaign that you know the courts have already taken uh, you know one of the presidential candidates out of the traditional campaign mold by requiring him to be in court, you know, three, four days a week. Uh, you know, in jail would be a whole different uh, phenomena. I doubt that that will happen, but the bottom line is there will still be an election in November and it will still be Donald Trump versus Joe Biden. Uh, what, what was kind of going through your head on Thursday when you first heard the news? I know we kind of talked very briefly and, and did some back and forth, but what was, what was going through your head when you first heard the verdict? Well, it's kind of like, you know, you and I have gone through a lot over the years. You know, I I thought I lived the textbook uh, on presidential politics or congressional politics in my lifetime, having gone through impeachment, having gone through the Iraq war and a whole bunch of other types of things. And, uh, you know, now being uh, in this job, as we have a president going through the criminal process, uh, you know, it's kind of like, okay, chalk one more up as a uh, as a first time experience for uh, for myself and in this case again for the country uh i'm gonna press you on this a little bit i guess but um with a former president going through the criminal process sh should a, should someone going through a criminal process be allowed to be president yeah i mean it, it's a process uh, this is the first stage and like i said before we've gone through this before where you know, there have been accusations made against Donald Trump uh, and they come out, you know, conveniently five, six months before the election or sometimes even closer to the election. Uh, the media goes crazy. Uh, other folks say, wow, you know, can we really consider uh, Donald Trump to be a viable candidate? And we get past the election uh, and all of a sudden we find out the Russian thing is a hoax. The Hunter Biden laptop is real. And I fully expect that as this case moves through the process, uh, that this case will most likely uh, be thrown out uh, and, you know, because of irregularities in the process. But we'll have to wait and see. You feel that there that the verdict was uh, illegitimate or that he should not have been convicted? I mean, I, I listen to a lot of the experts. I'm a marketing guy. I'm not a lawyer. OK, the lawyer and the judges and those types of folks will figure this out. But listening to a lot of uh, lawyers that uh, I've got respect for that I know well, uh, they've raised lots of what I believe are legitimate questions about the process uh, that was used to go after Donald Trump. 